Hey guys, uh, today I wanted to make a video about um, how to break through any creative blockage. I just feel like this is a really important subject because I personally have dealt with a lot of creative blocks as um, just as a creative person um, and I just feel like a lot of you guys are um, coming to me with questions about your creativity like in my private readings I've been um, doing a lot of readings for like really creative people and um, I I guess I just personally have felt a little bit blocked like in the last week or so creatively speaking and so yeah all of this stuff is just kind of combining and I just really wanted to make a video to share some tools and tips that I personally use to get through any type of creative blockage whether it's um, writer's block or creative resistance or anything that really just makes me feel uninspired to get to do my creative work. Um, so I'm going to try to keep this like fairly uh, quick, um, but the first thing that I really need to just say right from the beginning is that um, if you are feeling creatively blocked, I'm so sorry. I completely know where you're coming from. We all go through it. You're not weird or strange for experiencing it. It doesn't mean that you're a bad artist. Um, it doesn't mean that you're not meant to be an entrepreneur or a creator. It's something totally normal and natural that all of us come up against um, on our creative journey. So uh, right away, I just want to say that if you are experiencing a creative block of any kind, um, I'm so sorry, I'm totally there with you, and I'm going to share with you my strategies that I use to get through it, and hopefully there will be something in here that will be useful for you. Um, the first kind of category um, that I like to go to is basically just what I would call like permission slips um, to change your focus. So that's really the most important thing. Um, when you're having a creative block, you're focusing on something that makes you feel uninspired. So you could be focusing on your lack of ideas, you could be focusing on feeling indecisive, um, you could be beating yourself up about not making creative decisions or, you know, whatever. I, I just think that, like, right away, the first thing that you have to do is um, change your focus. So uh, there's a lot of ways that you can do that. Um First of all, you can change your focus simply by thinking a different thought, um, but if you don't catch that early enough, you can get momentum behind um, the negative thoughts, and so it's a lot more difficult to um, change your focus once you've been kind of like focusing in a certain way for a while. Um, so what I like to do is use um, things that I like would call like permission slips to change my focus. So the first category would be like, items, um, like magical items, basically. So um, I use crystals. Um, I use amethyst a lot with um, my writing. I like to hold it, meditate with it, um, kind of stare into it, almost like scrying, kind of. Uh, just the color is really therapeutic and reflective to me. So um, you can use a type of crystal that resonates with you. Um, again, these are just the objects that I would use when I'm feeling creatively blocked. Um, one that I'll mention quickly is uh, the Shiva Lingam, which is a really amazing stone for creativity. I have had some incredibly magical experiences with this stone. Um, it has given me some really great ideas when I've meditated with it. Um, for like, for example, before I started, before I moved my tarot um, readings back to Etsy. Um, I was kind of unsure like where to go at this point and I meditated with this stone and um, I had a strong urge to reopen my tarot shop on Etsy and it's been a wonderful journey so far so um, I have this stone to thank for that. It was definitely my permission slip to get into a different state of mind and follow a different kind of idea that I might not have really um, connected with uh, if I hadn't used this stone as my permission slip to do that. So yeah, Shiva Lingam, and there's a blog post that accompanies this video, so if you want to read more about the Shiva Lingam, you can always um, follow the link below, and um, I will, you know, write a little bit more in depth about each of these items. Um, 
The next thing that I like to do when I'm feeling creatively blocked, like so, you know, if I'm writing and I'm feeling frustrated, a lot of times um, using an incense or I like to use Palo Santo um, will really help kind of change my state. Um, I think that our sense of smell is really important when we're in kind of a negative state of mind or if we're struggling with something. Um, change your environment like energetically through your sense of smell. So incense, Palo Santo, um, you could use like an essential oil spray or work with essential oils on your skin. Anything that um, can really like get you to take a big breath and it's different, it can kind of work to change your state. Um, the next thing is kind of a silly one. I made this wand um, this is a very low budget project for me, but it was really, really fun. Um, I just got a stick from the yard and I used a razor blade to cut um, the outside off of like an electrical wire. So I got the copper out um, and then I put, uh, wrapped that around the stick and I put a quartz crystal at the end. I hollowed out in or inside the stick and put the crystal in there. And I do feel like directing energy with this wand is fun and I don't know that it's necessarily you know really super conductive but it's a great permission slip for me um, especially like if I'm doing a tarot reading for my writing um, or if I'm not sure which way to go with you know a creative project I'll uh, kind of use it to direct energy and to work with it in that way. So that one's fun. Um, I don't use it every day. Uh, I don't use it that often, but I like knowing that I have it and um, creating it in itself was a really fun project as well. So the next magical or um, kind of item that I like to use is meditation bells. And if you're familiar with my November creativity videos, then you probably saw that already. But um, I just feel like that sound is very cleansing and it really brings me back to the moment. So I really enjoy that and I love those. I got those, they were like $12 on Amazon or something. So you can try that. If that um, chills you out to hear that sound, I would definitely recommend that. Um, so these were items that you could use, you could keep them at your desk, um, and you could use them kind of just throughout the day if you're feeling like creatively blocked in minor ways. The next category um, of tools that I use to break through creative block would be uh, kind of something having to do with like, uh, hang on, okay, um, kind of something having to do with your, hang on one second. with your body. So if you are <clears throat> experiencing a creative block of any kind, it really helps to breathe deeply and get your blood pumping. So um, you could do 10 minutes of yoga, you could um, get up and stretch, you could go for a walk. Um, anything like that can really help to loosen up like tense creative energy that isn't, you know, flowing. Um, Another really ridiculously simple one that I love and I use it all the time um, is what I call the magician. So <clears throat> this one's exciting. The magician card, uh, like the man is kind of standing with like one hand pointing up and one pointing down at the earth. And that symbolizes an open channel of energy flowing, like higher energies flowing into physical manifestation. So that's a really powerful theme for creativity. <laughs> that's like exactly what you want. Um, and I've found that actually if you stand like the magician, you know, with, um, you could use your, whatever hand you don't write with, um, your receptive hand would point up because you're receiving the energies from above. So I'm right-handed. So my left hand goes in the air and my right hand points down. And I even just do this at my desk. Like I'll just stretch and you can really feel, you really feel so open when you do this. You can feel the energy 
able to move through you. And so I like to take a few breaths, um, at least a few breaths. Sometimes I'll hold that for um, 30 seconds to a minute, sometimes two minutes. Um, sometimes I'll switch arms. And it just, it really opens you up and it really gets the energy flowing again. So these have been just some like really simple things that you can do. Um, if you are feeling like more, like there's more of a, like a longer creative block or you, it's not something that's like a quick fix, then all of these things will help, but they're not maybe going to like completely solve the issue. And it's going to be something that you have to try like multiple things, you know, to get through it. Um, the next thing that I would recommend is just take a break. Um, get away from your workspace, go somewhere else, um, drive somewhere or walk somewhere, or take a mental break. Um, read an, another person's work if you are a writer. Listen to someone else's music if you're a musician. Um, just do anything that you can to really distract yourself and embrace the feeling of inspiration. You know, you have to give yourself permission to feel inspired. Um, because that feeling of inspiration that you get from exploring another person's creative work, that will transfer into your work and it will open you up and it will help you feel more inspired. So for me, since I'm a writer, I will usually, um, if I'm feeling really blocked, I will just read someone else's book, but it'll usually be someone's book who um, is not like something that I will be really influenced by. So um, I'll read a book that is a different genre, for example, than the, the book that I'm working on so that I'm not too influenced by it. But um, yeah, I don't know if that applies to like every creative person, but I just thought I would mention that. So yeah, those are all some really good tips. And then the last thing that I would mention is um, reading books by creative people for creative people. The first one that obviously comes to mind is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. It is, um, I don't have a physical copy to show you because I have it on ebook, but um, it is a really, really amazing book for um, anybody who's dealing with a creative struggle. I would definitely recommend it. It really helped me get through some creative challenges that I was going through um, last year. And a couple other books that I would mention are Artist's Way. Um, this is a really good book. I definitely got a lot out of it. I didn't follow all of the rules. It's actually a course, and I didn't do, like, every single thing that she recommends. Um, but it's really... It's, it says it's a spiritual path to higher creativity, and I would agree with that, <laughs> that statement. Um, it is about connecting with your inner artist, and it is about healing from creative injuries. It's about... Um, learning how to create freely and to write and create in a way that is really unedited and really free. So I think that if you're dealing with kind of like a more um, emotional creative block, this would definitely be a really, really helpful one for you um, to read. Another one that I really like is Your Heart's Desire um, by Sonia Choquette. And it's definitely... Um, it says instructions for creating the life you really want. And so it's not just purely about creating like, you know, for example, a business or your artwork or something like that. It's really about making your life into a work of art. So I really resonate with that. And I love how um, the first principle or like the first module or whatever of this course, book course, um, has a lot to do with um, deciding like what you really want to create. And I think that's so important because as creative people, it's really easy for us to um, just keep creating and creating and not always like stop and question like what our intention really is and um because our our desires are always changing our um passions and our needs are change as we grow as um as people we just we change and so our preferences change so we do um need to check in with that as we grow and change so I really appreciated that 
And the last book I'm going to mention is not a book about creativity, but it is a really powerful book um, about finding meaning in whatever it is that you're going through. It's called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And this is a really, really powerful book. It's definitely a psychology book, but essentially um, what it's about is how we find meaning and how we derive meaning through um, our lives. And I just think that the message is so powerful because he um, he was actually like in an internment camp in World War II, um, in a Nazi camp. So he survived and he just, his story is so amazing. It's breathtaking. And you really get, um, as an artist and like a creative person for me, I really felt like um, inspired by this person's journey and um, it really helped me look at the different ways that I find meaning in my life for example through tarot and um, just the other ways that I see meaningful synchronicities happening for me as a creator so that's been like really really helpful um, the last thing that I would mention for um, you to get through any creative block is obviously tarot um, you could do a tarot reading for yourself. Um, a lot of times I'll actually use my tarot cards for my creative projects. So what that means is I will um, pull a few cards. Like, for example, if I'm about to write a new chapter of a book, I'll pull a few cards just to show me, like, developments in the story that I might not have thought about or, like, themes that, you know, I can tease more emphasis, more drama, more, you know, inspiration out of. Um, and I found that the tarot works really well that way. I think that it would probably work in that way um, similar, similarly for a lot of other artists as well. So um, you can play around with that. You can pull cards um, just in any way, shape, or form that makes sense to you for, you know, based on whatever you're working on. Um, and then the last thing that you can do is um, work actually with a tarot card reader and um, look at the kind of the reasons why you're feeling blocked. Um, we can look at what's going on for you, what kind of challenges um, you're being faced with, and also what kind of strengths you have as a unique creative person, you know, like what what is, um, you know, your strange jewels, like Elizabeth Gilbert talks about in her book, Big Magic, how we all have these strange jewels inside of us. We have these special, unique gifts, and our life purpose is to, to bring those out into the world and to really communicate them and um, embrace them wholeheartedly. So we uh, can look at that. I do offer um, an artist tarot reading in my shop, which has um, been one of my like best, most well-received readings. I feel like I've been making a lot of progress with my clients with this reading, and um, I've really, I really enjoy giving it. And um, I made my own spread for it, and it's just been really fun. So um, it's also like really inexpensive too. So if you want to check that out um, on my Etsy shop, I will put a link below, um, and. Yeah, lastly, I just want to say that if you are feeling creatively blocked at all, I'm so sorry, but I really hope that all of these techniques that I've shared, at least some of them will resonate with you and um, or give you some ideas to maybe help you get through that because, you know, I've totally been there. I've been dealing with it even recently. I think it's just one of those things that you just go through in life. Um, when you're creating, there's times where you feel like a lot of momentum and there's times where you have to kind of just get through, you know, like a time where it just feels slower or feels more frustrating. And so I just want to say that um, definitely if you're feeling blocked, like just know that for sure it will pass. Like you're going to be fine. You are going to get through it um, and you're going to feel a lot more inspired. All you need to do is just change your state, change your focus, be willing to look in a different direction and give yourself permission to feel inspired in whatever way that manifests for you. Just, um, you know, give yourself permission to enjoy the process and, um, it will, it will get better. So 
just wanted to say that. And um, also I wanted to say thank you to everyone who's been liking, commenting, and subscribing with my videos. I just think it's amazing. I'm like overwhelmed with <laughs> all of the great feedback. You guys are so, so sweet. And uh, yeah, so thank you. Thank you so much. And um, if you'd like to learn more about these items that I shared with you, I um, will put a link below to the blog post that accompanies this video. Okay, I hope you have a really great rest of your day and happy creating.